What is going on guys, Eagle with Clark back here and in today's video I'm going to be coming at you guys with yet another care guide. Uh, this time on a very odd and interesting species being the tube anemone. Now there are no other tube anemone care guides online or on YouTube so I figured I'd make one because I love this guy. It's like one of my favorite things in the uh, reef tank. Uh, my tube anemone is becoming uh, one of the, my very favorite creatures in my reef tank because mostly uh, because how it looks and behaves. I love these guys and they are uh, such a fun creature to have in a saltwater tank. Whether it be a reef tank, or, uh, like a saltwater tank, low tech saltwater tank, whatever. Whatever you want to keep it with. Uh, let's start out with the characteristics of this animal. Um, the closest thing I could relate them to is actually like a feather duster one. Uh, they're pretty much the same in a lot of ways uh, by how they look and act. Uh, and also a lot of their characteristics being like, uh, it, I'm just saying it resembles like a feather duster. I mean, they're nowhere near the same species or even in the same class of species. Uh, but I, I say it closely, uh, to me, it reminds me of a feather duster. Um, so the first thing you'll notice are the extremely long tentacles in the glowing center. Uh, the center actually being the mouth of these uh, these. These features set this guy off from everything else in my reef tank. That's originally why I bought them. Uh, they're actually body, the actually body of uh, this anemone. It's actually pretty nasty looking, to be honest. Uh, what I could compare it to is like the feather duster worm, uh, where they build their own protective layer out of like a mucus type substance, and that protects their bodies from like uh, predators and being injured or anything, uh, which is pretty gross, but yet awesome in my opinion, what they do. Uh, but don't worry, you won't see their, actually, their actual uh, body because if you put these guys in a rock cave or in the sand like you're supposed to, uh, like I did, or bury them in the sand, uh, they will actually attach the rock or bury themselves in the sand uh, so it's out of sight and out of reach or anything that could uh, harm the anemone in any way. Uh, leaving, they bury their body leaving only the awesome mouth and tentacles on display. Uh, for of course you and uh, like viewers of the tank, uh, they come in so many different striking colors. It's crazy. Um, you can get them in like a bright orange, white, like I have, uh, black, green, pink, and there's a lot more colors. Yeah, I'm not gonna list them all. Uh, I have three of them in my tank. Um, my biggest one is white with a pink center. Uh, the other one is green with a pink center, and my last one is all black. Uh, with like little green stripes along its tentacles, it's pretty cool. Uh, in, a, in a way, that black one kind of resembles like a, a sun coral almost, like one of those black sun corals. Uh, I assure you that these guys will draw a great amount of attention in any reef tank, uh, which is always a plus. When I bought mine, it actually came with those other two attached to it, so I got three, uh, three of them. For the price of one, and when I got home, I actually separated them, and now I got three different ones. So I now got like a two anemone colony going on, uh, which is cool because if you mix these guys, they actually won't sting each other, so they can get along. And now I find these anemones uh, hands down to be the very best anemones for reef tanks, in my opinion, mostly because they don't move. You place them in a spot, and they will secure themselves, but they will not move around like other anemone species, which is a huge, huge plus uh, because everybody knows it's a risk to add an anemone to a reef tank because it can move around, sting corals. Uh, I will say though that these guys have a very potent sting to corals and fish and you must give a distance in your reef tank because they will sting and kill corals relatively quickly. Uh, that's what happened to my candy cane coral. I didn't know this guy expanded as big as he did at night. They expanded over my candy cane, almost killed it, but I still got it. Uh, they can also sting fish, but I haven't witnessed it before because my fish know to keep a distance and they never go near them. Same with the bubble tip anemone. All fish, except clownfish, know to keep a distance. Uh, these anemones are also non-photosynthetic, which means they don't need light to survive and they don't need to be in the light during the day, which is great if you have a shaded spot in your tank that needs something uh, to fill it. Uh, these anemones are also nocturnal and open biggest at night. They also expand. Uh, mine like almost triples its size at night compared to the daytime hours because again they don't like the light. Uh, now this doesn't mean the anemone will be gone during the day. You won't 
This doesn't mean you won't see it during the day uh, because at least in my case, my tube anemones are always open. They're just not as big or expanded as at night. Uh, but I still can see them and feed them perfectly uh, good in the daytime. Uh, now being non-photosynthetic means these guys must have to, or have to be fed at least every other day uh, some sort of food. Mine eats whatever I feed my fish uh, that day, whether it be like brine or mysis shrimp, krill, even some plankton. These guys pretty much eat anything. Anything that falls and touches one of the tentacles, they're just dragging it straight to their mouth. They don't care. Uh, now, don't worry. Uh, these guys won't be aboard when you feed it. I find these guys to be the funnest thing to feed my reef aquarium, besides the fish. Uh, they have the fastest feeding response of anything in my tank, with the exception of the fish inverts. Uh, the instant something touches just one of their tentacles, it instantly is dragged to the mouth and eaten. It's, a, it's crazy. It, it's the craziest feeding response I've seen in uh, anything uh, besides my fish. Uh, I wouldn't add these guys to a bare bottom tank because they need sand to bury the body in and they prefer to be on the bottom of the tank in the sand bed uh, and I don't think they would do good in the rock structures like feather dusters. They like the sand, they bury themselves in the sand, so you gotta put them in the sand. Um, I find them to be the easiest and them to care for. Uh, they are not moody and don't move around, which is a huge plus and are always willing to eat. Uh, they also don't need great lights, which is great if you're on a budget or just like a fish only tank, maybe. Uh, it's pretty cool. They don't need light. Uh, I have a blast feeding the guy, these guys and you guys will too. Uh, go check out, actually go check out my past uh, video. It's called the Coral Feeding Time Lapse. I have these anemones eating in that video uh, in, or in like uh, time lapse. It's pretty cool. You'll see how fast they eat. Now, uh, the max size of these guys is about 10 inches wide, tentacle to tentacle, uh, which mine, eh, he's probably around 6 inches fully expanded. Uh, there he is in the daytime, this video. Um, he's in the, see, he's not big as he is at night, uh, but he still comes out. Um, so, these guys do get decent size. Uh, they're a centerpiece for any reef tank, I can guarantee you that. Uh, now, these are not all as common as other species anemones in the aquarium trade, but fish stores do get them in every now and then, like mine, uh, or you can always special order them, ask them to get you one in. They should be able to get one. Uh, they will range in price of about $40 to like $60, anywhere between there. They're not too expensive, not, a, not as expensive as other anemones, some of the anemones. Uh, flow for these guys shouldn't be too strong, and light flow is preferred for them, and a minimum tank size, in my opinion, for them, uh, should be around maybe 20 gallons because they do get relatively large, just like most anemones. So give them some room, because um, keep in mind, yeah, they do uh, get decently large. Uh, so all in all, I mean, the tube anemone is going to be one of, if not, the coolest thing you could possibly add to your reef tank or just fish tank, saltwater tank. And I know all you guys out there will love them, just like I like mine, love mine. So go out there and find one because they definitely will not disappoint. Um, all right, guys, that wraps up another care guide, this time on the one and only tube anemone. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to watch some of my other videos and uh, care guide playlists for the up and also the upcoming 125-gallon reef tank build. I am almost there. I'm almost going to fill it with water. I'm close. Um, also, be sure to follow me on Instagram for exclusive posts at Eagle Aquatics. No spaces, no caps. Uh, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and drop a suggestion for some videos in the comments. And I'll see you guys next time.